there are places in the Bible that have really exciting stories that you've never even heard about. And we're going to be talking with Aaron Lipkin today about some of those very, very exciting Bible stories. Let's call them backstories because whoever talks about a man named Sisera? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Sisera today. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to have Aaron Lipkin uh, with us today. Uh, Aaron has uh, brought with him a couple of really interesting books by a man named Adam Sertal. And you knew Adam Zertal. Uh, he uh, passed away not too long ago. And uh, let's acquaint our audience with this man because he really had some marvelous ideas. Yes, he did. Uh, marvelous ideas and a, and a really amazing life. I want to first start with, with my personal testimony. Uh, growing up in Jerusalem as a kid, uh, we were brought up believing that, that God exists, uh, that God uh, that God has providence over our lives, uh, over the lives of our nation, over the, 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 the history of the world. Um, and we had a lot of respect towards the Bible. The Bible for us was not just a, a book of, of, uh, of laws, a book of prophecies, but also a book of history. It, was, it, it, it described events that we wholeheartedly believed happened. And I remember going to high school, unfortunately, uh, in the school I went to, which was not a religious school, it was a secular school, uh, the teacher taught us that the Bible was not true, that hmm. the stories there never happened or are inaccurate or distorted. Um, and I remember as a, as a kid, as a Bible believer, a, a Jew that believes in God, to hear that being said in, in the classroom at a Jewish school, in Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, the land of the Bible, was for me infuriating. How, mm. how can my teacher talk like that? Uh, but she was talking like that because that is the uh, academic perception of the Bible. Uh, the Bible is not, not, nothing more than a mythology, just like the Greek mythology or other mythologies in the world. Uh, it's, it really never happened. Um, and I, I, you know, I, 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 I grew up in that understanding. And one day I walk in Jerusalem and I see that there is an ad uh, of professor of archaeology, Adam Zertal, that's going to talk about his discovery of Joshua's altar. Hmm. And for me that was astounding because fi finally I see a professor of archaeology, an Israeli, uh, lecturing about a, an archaeological discovery that reaffirms the events in the Bible that reaffirms the ceremony of the blessings and the curses described in the book of Joshua. So I went to that lecture and I met this amazing person. You know, professor is a big word. Professor Zertal, Adam Zertal was a very modest person. Uh, he grew up in a left-wing, non-believing kibbutz in Israel. Um, and he, he got wounded in the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Uh, he became uh, uh, handicapped, and uh, he started learning archaeology. And everybody was, you know, saying, you know, you're not going to get anywhere because you don't have feet. You can't walk. You can't excavate. You can't survey. And he proved everyone wrong. Mm. Um, he walked with his crutches all over Israel, uh, surveying the land, documenting, excavating. And the amazing thing is that that you have a non-believer. A, a person who grew up in that academic perception that the Bible is not true, and suddenly he's finding things that reaffirm the Bible. Um, and you know, we're, we're, we have two books here that were written by Professor Zertal, his own testimony of findings that he uh, excavated that prove certain, his certain historical events in the Bible. This is very interesting because we have the same situation in America. In fact, the, you could say that from the, the lower grades in public school all the way up through the big uh, uh, liberal colleges, liberal arts, sciences, history, it doesn't matter. 
they all pretty much hold to this idea that uh, the Bible is a, you know, is a fanciful kind of a handed down group of tales that really don't connect with anything that you can find uh, on the ground. If you went to where these things were supposed to have happened, you're not going to find anything there. And this is pretty much what's taught in American schools today, which is very sad. But that's where the story just begins for right, you. Right, right. And, um, you know, I've, I've been following Professor Zertal since that lecture and bringing him to speak to my groups. I am a travel agent. Um, I bring groups uh, to Israel, but specifically to the biblical heartland, Judea and Samaria. Um, you know, all these liberal forces that are uh, fighting against the Bible, that are fighting against God, against, against what we believe are the family values and the biblical values, they're also fighting Judea and Samaria. They're fighting the biblical heartland. Um, th then the reason why, the, why, why they're doing that is because it's the biblical heartland. That's where all the stories happen. I live in Ofra, which is in Samaria. I'm right by Bethel, south of Shiloh, uh, half an hour drive from Mount Gerizim and Mount Ibal. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all important sites that, that represent God, that represents the Bible. And, and that's why so many liberals and academics are, are against the, the Jewish control of these areas. And yet Professor Zertal, when he looked at these areas, he saw an opportunity. He said, now I can go and, and, and check all these places to see if these stories are true. And, and he didn't go to these places to prove the Bible. He just came as, as a scientist. He came as an archaeologist uh, to see the evidence. And when he encountered the evidence, only then he opened the Bible to better understand what he found. Wow. And we're talking with Aaron Lipkin. Many of you have seen his father, Avi Lipkin, uh, right here at Prophecy Watchers many times in the past. You've gotten to know him. And his son Aaron is, uh, well, let's put it this way, he's very serious about studies of the land of Israel, as am I. And I'm holding Adam uh, Zertal's book here entitled A Nation Born. And right on the cover is a, uh, an aerial photograph of a stone altar. And w with a couple of people standing and looking at the stone altar. And this altar is on uh, Mount Ebal, 30 minutes from your house. Wow. You could just get in your car and drive over there. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> And, but it's the, and it, it just boggles my mind every time I think of it. You're a 30 minute drive from something that built by the hands of Joshua himself. Yes. It must take your breath away when you go to see that. Gary, every time I visit the altar, I get goosebumps. Wow. It's just, I, I, you know, I stand there and, you know, I, I look at the stones that were built by my ancestors. Uh, as part of a very important ceremony that was that was that that happened there, right there, um, and and you know I, I, I sometimes I, I look at the natural amphitheater behind the altar and I imagine hundreds of thousands of Israelites standing on the mountain watching what was going on at the altar and the footprint around the altar, and also looking into the distance eastward uh, to the Jabok Pass. Uh, at the Jordan Valley, mm -hmm. where Jacob became Israel, where Jacob fought the angel and was named Israel, the founding father of the nation of, of the Israelites. Um, and, and, and I stand there and I, and I connect in, in so many dimensions to my identity as a, as a Jew, as an Israelite. Um, it's, it's really amazing. Now, as I look at this book uh, by Adam Zertal, uh, it it, it's a, a very detailed book. It goes into a lot of details, diagrams, it has maps, uh, it has a lot of fine print, and, uh, but I don't want to frighten you away from it because it's an easy read. I've, I've read enough of this to know that it's very easy to read, and, and if you can't drive 30 minutes from your house to see the altar <laughs> of Joshua, you can read about it in this book, and it's like the same as being there. Yes. Uh, and there is so much connected with this altar. It's just staggering how much detail he includes yes. uh, about how this validates 
the things that you read in Scripture. And, he, and he's writing it not, as a, as a, not from the standpoint of as a professor of archaeology, a scholar. He's writing it on a personal note. This is a personal diary of, of uh, Professor Zertal not just discovering uh, or showing the evidence or of the excavations, but also talking about his feelings, about how he was totally changed by this discovery. I don't know if you remember when Professor Zertal spoke to our group mm -hmm. uh, at, in Jerusalem at the hotel, I um, uh, presented him as the born-again archaeologist. Ah, I remember. <laughs> because from, from an archaeologist that, that came from the old school of, of non-believing, not, not believing that the, the historicity of the Bible, to someone that was totally devoted to proving the historicity of the Bible, to show that the Bible is true. And I, I believe that that's part of the restoration that's happening in Israel now. Uh, you know, we don't see just the restoration of the Jewish people in the land, Jewish sovereignty, the restoration of the Hebrew language. We're also seeing the restoration of the Bible. We see how uh, more and more archaeological evidence is, being, uh, is, is strengthening the historicity of the Bible and how the archaeologists that oppose the Bible, that oppose the historicity of the Bible, are in silence because they just cannot answer back to the evidence that's being found. Well, let me ask you a question. Um, can you see a trend developing? That is to say, are, are Israeli archaeologists becoming more and more religious uh, about what they're looking at? Uh, can you see that trend developing? I wouldn't say religious. Uh, you know, every time that Professor Zeltal was asked during his lectures, so do you believe in God now? So he would, he would be very careful and say, I am more... Jewish. I am <laughs> more Jewish. Uh, yeah, more Jewish. Uh, that's how, what he would say. You have to remember that if you are, a, if you tag yourself as a religious scientist in the academic world, you're immediately disqualified. Uh, uh, because so there still is a barrier there. Because you're not objective, because you, uh, you hold, uh, you know, uh, primitive views about the world, about life, about history. Uh, it's still uh, problematic, but I definitely can say that the camp of archaeologists that believe in the events that are described in the Bible is becoming more and more mainstream in the academic world, where 10 years ago they would be considered crazy. So uh, I think that we're, we're heading the right way. Well, as a Bible-believing Christian and one who teaches Bible prophecy and who believes the prophecies of the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, it says volumes about what's going to happen to Israel in the latter days. Israel is going to rise again to greatness. Uh, there will be some stumblings along the way, as there have been in the past, but it's going to happen. And, and I really believe that God is overseeing events in the land of Israel today. I agree with you, and, and I see it in my own personal life. You know, my father, Avi Lipkin, born and raised in New York in the States. My mother was born and raised in Cairo, Egypt. Mm. And they met in Israel, uh, you know, they returned back home after 2,000 years of exile. Uh, and again, you see another prophecy being fulfilled. I'm actually trying to... To, to do something of my own to help and, and Israel, to, to help the restoration, the redemption. Uh, you know, when, where I live in, in Ofra and Samaria, I look around and I see that the, 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 the mountains are barren. Uh, and when I read in the Bible, uh, in the book of Joshua, uh, and, 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 and also in, in the book of Kings, you see that Samaria had, you know, large forests. And uh, what, what I'm trying to do now is to restore the forests back to Samaria. Uh, so uh, if, if, you, if you want to, to help rest restoring the forests to Samaria, uh, if you can visit uh, um, heartlandtrees.net, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, taking donations to plant trees. So you can mm -hmm. uh, uh, choose any plan you want to, to, you know, to plant one tree or 10 trees. And That's heartlandtrees.net. Yes. Interesting. You know, trees for Israel has been a theme ever since Israeli statehood. <clears throat> and and uh, uh, all of us who study uh, Israel realize that when, when the Jews came back, 
a century plus ago. The, the place was barren. There were no trees. They had all been cut down because of the tree tax, by the way. Uh, that's another story. But, uh, but the, the place was barren, and suddenly it became a, a, a land of trees and banana plants and, and uh, beautiful fruits and, and so forth. Another miracle, that's another prophecy that's being uh, yeah. uh, fulfilled. And so Adam Zertal, uh, in spite of himself, became convinced, well, maybe there's something to this. Uh, what's, what's the highlight of this book? Uh, it's called A Nation Born, by the way. And, and, and I think what he means by that is that, that everything's being validated about Israel. There's a connection with, with the old Israel and the new Israel. Yes, and, and that, that the importance of this event is that, that, that the nation of Israel became one in the land. I mean, until now they were in the desert wandering, but now they are complete. They are a nation in their land, and that is what this uh, event at, at Mount Ibal, at Mount Gerizim, uh, celebrates. And Professor Zertal felt very close to this event because he had a very nationalistic view of, of Israel, of the nation of Israel. Uh, and so for him, what's going on today in Israel corresponds with the event in Mount Gerizim and Mount Ibal. Um, and, I'm, and again, I, I'm, every time I go there, I, you know, I, I'm amazed. And I really invite people to come to Israel, not just to visit the classical sites uh, that everybody visits, but to come to the biblical heartland and to visit those sites um, that are spoken about in Professor Zeltar's books, because these are the hardcore biblical sites. Now, let's go in an entirely different direction. Another book by Adam Zertal is called Sisera's Secret. And <clears throat> some of you who are avid uh, scripture readers will recognize the name Sisera. Others will say, what? Sisera who? What? <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> but uh, he was an enemy of Israel. And he's, he's spoken about in the book of Judges. Very, very... Uh, in a very uh, negative way, let's put it that way. Uh, God is against Sisera. And, and, and this comes at the time of Deborah and Barak. Yes. Uh, as, and Deborah was, was a judge in Israel. And if anything, she was one of the most powerful leaders Israel ever had. And that's where this story comes together. Yes, and, and we're talking about the book of Judges uh, which is kind of considered the mi mid medieval period of the Israelites, uh, a time where the tribes uh, are taking care of themselves uh, and, and the nation of Israel is not as it should be united. Uh, and they are fighting against the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the different nations that reside in the land of Israel. Now, everybody heard of the Philistines. We know that the Philistines came from uh, the Greek islands, um, and, and, and yet here yeah. uh, in this story we hear that, that King uh, Javan um, had a, a, a warlord by the name of Sisera. Um, and again, when, when, we've been, when we read this story and we, the miraculous victory of Barak and Deborah over uh, Sisera and the Canaanite armies, uh, again, we, you know, we see the hand of God, we see the big miracle of uh, probably uh, large floods that defeated the armies of Sisera and helped the Israelites. Um, but again, when, when you put the story aside and, and you're going into archaeology, you have Professor Zertal, Adam Zertal, starting to, to you know, excavating a, a mysterious site uh, called El Ahwat, and suddenly he sees a, a city that is not a typical Canaanite city. Hmm. The buildings are built in a totally different way. Um, and the, the architecture, the way the, the, the layout of the city is very different than the Canaanite cities. It's not an Israelite city. Um, a city that was destroyed. And he, he describes in his book how he, he investigates, how he, he, he excavates the city and, you know, doesn't know where, where, who does this city belong to, who built it. And suddenly a, an excavation a crew from uh, Sardinia uh, comes in uh, from the, uh, the islands of Italy and, 
and they come in and, and they see the monuments there and they tell them, well, this is, this is, from, this is from where we are. Ah. This is, yeah, this is from Sardinia. Sardinia is over uh, near the Aegean Sea yeah. and it's in the land that would, we, we, would, we would call the land of ancient Greece. Right. Yeah. And so, and so Professor Zeltal describes how he travels to Sardinia to see uh, the, uh, the archaeology there uh -huh. and he comes to the conclusion that the city that he is excavating in Israel belongs to Sisera and the people, the Chardonnay people uh, that come from Sardinia. We, everybody knows about the Philistines. Yes. Uh, but there were a couple of nations that invaded the land of Israel uh, during the time of Joshua and the judges uh, from Greece, from Italy. And uh, Sisera was part of that uh, group of people. And Professor Zeltal believes that the city he excavated is Haroshet Hagoim, uh, the city of Sisera, which is mentioned in the Book of Judges. Wow. And so again, again, a, a, a historical um, a, a evidence. Yeah, uh, and I'm looking mm -hmm. at Judges chapter mm -hmm. 4 mm -hmm. here. Uh, <clears throat> and verse 2, and it said, And the Lord had sold them, that is, sold Israel, into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned uh, in Hazor, the captain of whose army was Sisera. And there you have the story. And, the, and you could just read past this and say, well, uh, you know, another time. But on the other hand, when you begin to know who that is and what he did, and you put this in the whole narrative of the Bible, it adds a lot to the story of the Bible. Correct. And you, and you see that you had the local Canaanite nations that were residing in the land. And you had the foreigners from Greece and Italy that were uh, residing in the coastal uh, lands. And obviously they were not in very good relations. But when yeah. they see the enemy coming in, when they see the Israelites coming into the land, the Canaanites, King Javan, mm -hmm. and Sisera, and, and, and the Chardonnay people from Italy come together to fight against the Israelites. Uh, and uh, as Professor Zertal found, the city was destroyed. Uh, and we know by who? By Barak and Deborah. And, and again, this is an amazing testimony. And I want to say that in May, May 12, we're going to have a tour uh, hosted by uh, many know Derek and Sharon Gilbert, mm -hmm. and also Pastor Carl Gallops. And they're going to visit uh, El Ahwat, the city that uh, Zeltal found, uh, as part of the um, uh, research that uh, Derek Gilbert is doing. And approximately, mm -hmm. where is this located? Uh, this is in the Jezreel Valley. Just real valley. Yeah, and, and exactly where the story is described in the book of Judges. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the battle uh, between Deborah and, uh, and Barak and, and uh, Sisera and the Canaanites. So it's really the story of an external invasion. Uh, well, let's, let's say the Greeks invaded and they said, okay, we've decided this land is so beautiful we're going to take it for ourselves. But they were not successful. They were not successful, as we know from the Bible. Uh, but uh, again, it's, it's amazing to see how the archaeological evidence uh, proves that there were uh, people like Sisera uh, who came from the Greek islands uh, to the land of Israel uh, to settle. And, and as part of the invasion of, of those nations, the nations of the sea, uh, into the land. This is uh, pretty much what Aaron thinks about a lot of the time. I know because I've talked with him and he always <laughs> rolls the subject around to these great historical moves in, in Israel's past. You're really serious about these things. Yes. <laughs> and you know, <clears throat> we should be too because uh, anything you can discover that brings the Bible, uh, the Old Testament, into uh, technicolor reality <clears throat> is, is always an addition to the way you look at Scripture. If you can see that, that what you're reading here really happened and that there was a reason why things unfolded the way they did, it just adds so much to the biblical narrative that you never thought was there before. Yes, and, and the also the Old Testament also carries, these stories carry a message. And the message is very simple. If you are righteous, if you do what God commands you to do, uh, then God will be with you. Uh, he will make you victorious, just like the Israelites were victorious against Sisera and the Canaanites. Uh, but not just that, also the fact that, that in order to, to be successful, you need to initiate. You need to 
to perform, you need to do it. And, and the message I believe that we, we see in this story of Deborah and Barak is that first of all, there is divine providence. God interferes in history in order to, to, uh, to make the righteous successful and, and, and to show his glory. And, and the glory of God is shown very well in this story. Also the glory of Deborah and Yael, the women, uh, that are very, very, a very, very important part of this story. And also to show that in order to, to be successful, you need to initiate, you need to, to, to do things, and God will make you successful. Uh, and this, I, I think, is embedded in this amazing story. I have the two books right here by uh, Adam Zertal, the archaeologist. And I was privileged to hear him speak before he passed on. And, and it was a very inspiring speech, I must say. And his life was inspiring. Uh, the man fought in, in, in the war for, for Israel independence. Uh, and he became more than an intellectual. He became a, an, a field researcher who came to, a, if you will, a kind of a belief just because of what he found, which is amazing to me. Cicero's Secret is the one book by Adam Zertal. The other one that we talked about in the first part of the program is called A Nation Born. And on the cover uh, is this wonderful, wonderful altar on Mount Ebal. And uh, when you read the story behind this altar and realize that the things that happened there are actually historically real and they reflect the pages of Scripture, it's, it's very exciting. And if you're at all uh, motivated to read this sort of literature. These are two of the top books. Cicero's Secret, A Nation Born. And uh, these two books are yours for a gift of $39.95. Prophecywatchers.tv Scroll down to the online uh, bookstore and you'll find uh, well, you'll find several things there. In, uh, you'll find these two books uh, and uh, you'll find a wonderful presentation by Aaron Lipkin at the Rocky Mountain uh, Prophecy Conference. It's called Ancient Footsteps. Aaron has a special feel uh, for archaeology and the reality of it. Remember, Mysteries of Archaeology Package, Cicero's Secret, A Nation Born. Uh, and by the way, this is a tremendous package. Uh, you'll be more excited about it than I think you ever thought you would be excited about archaeology of any sort. Aaron, always good to talk to you and I wish we had more time, but uh, you're on your way, and you'll be back uh, at your home 30 minutes away from, <laughs> from the altar we've been talking about. And we'll be waiting for you, Gary, to come again to Israel <laughs> for the third time. <laughs> I, I would like to come for the third time, believe me. Aaron Lipkin, uh, he's always doing something really exciting, and we're, we'll be talking with him in the future. I'm Gary Stearman. Keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.